Hello, welcome back to the channel. So, today's job, we're planting poplar poles. I did some of these yesterday, did about 20. Um, got a gully over there, did some, and then just we're gonna systematically go through this face and do a grid pattern. So, we're planting them about 14, 12 to 14 meters on the square. Um, both for a couple of reasons, well, three or four reasons. So, erosion control is the main one. Um, stock shade and shelter and then in a pinch um, we can actually prune them and feed the feed the leaves in the summer and a drought to the stock they love uh, poplar, poplar and willow leaves um, and it's good for them too full of tannins and whatnot um, so yeah this planting program is all thanks to ECAN so Environment Canterbury love them or hate them we um, have some funding so Waimakariri district, uh, Kaikoura district and the Huranui district are part of the SCAR program. The Waimak, this is the first winter we've been part of it, which is pretty cool. Been able to access some of this. So SCAR, I'll put the acronym down the bottom here, can't remember what it stands for. Um, and yeah, we get these poplar poles subsidised. So $4 for a pole, which is one of these buggers down here, and then you get a free sleeve. So these poles have got all sleeves on them, help protect them from the stock, possums, um, deer, everything, yeah. Uh, stop the grass growing up around them and smothering them and things like that, so. And then, I'll show you on here, once the pole grows up to about six years old, they've got this zipper on it, and this will just uh, come undone with the pressure from the pole. So you could just, you can pretty much rip them open. Um, and then they're recyclable as well, so you can just gather them up, and uh, recycle them away so um yeah poles come in a bunch of five like this so the colors you'll see a whole bunch of different colors those ones are yellow those ones are red we've got some white ones some blue and white ones some red and blue ones uh they're all different varieties so different varieties breed for different purposes um drought tolerance possum tolerance um wind tolerance things like that so the whole bunch of different varieties around that um, can suit your conditions. So, um, I will link the ECAN website for the SCAR program in the description below. So if you haven't checked them out and you're in any of those three districts, or pretty much in New Zealand, each uh, regional council has a program like this. So um, definitely, definitely check it out because this funding's not gonna be here forever and it's a great way to be able to get some trees on farm like this and then the other option is um, we can lodge these with ETS as well. So we can gain up to about $1,500 a hectare with um, adding these into the ETS with carbon credits. Uh, whether you believe in carbon credits or not, that's not the point. The point is that um, the money's there for the taking. Um, my advice to you is, is at least look at it. <laughs> Snowy chasing cheap poo around. Um, yeah, so where were we? Uh, yeah, poles come in, in bundles of five like this. We've been soaking them in a bucket of water overnight. When they were dropped off, we've had a sprinkler going over top of them to keep them moist, and they've, they've been soaking in a bucket of water. Um, what we're gonna do now is cut the strings, and so we'll do that. Cut the strings top and bottom. And then what I've done is marked 700 mils from the bottom of the pole up to there. So then we'll just finish marking these off. And that's pretty much how deep you want them to be. I did some at 800 mils yesterday. And in this ground, you just can't get them in. There's this bedrock, just not that far underneath. So um, we've got the tool up there that we use to get them in. So um, they've got this nice, nice uh, angle cut on the bottom, so a bit more than 40 to 45 degrees, and that just helps them from turning in the wind. If you have a flat bottom, they're going to corkscrew in the ground, they're going to wobble around with the winds that we get here, and they're going to turn and uh, eventually they'll get loose and fall over. So we're going to put these sleeves on now, um, do that now before we bash them in because uh, they'll be pretty tricky to get a sleeve on as you can see they're three meter poles so there's two and a was it 2.3 meters out of the ground <laughs> i'm tall but i'm not that tall so i'll throw some sleeves on 
carry them up to there where we're continuing our line and uh, I'll show you the planting process. Grab a bolt, grab a sleeve. Right, was that a cool shot? Me walking away. And the thing is, I've got to walk back and get the camera. <laughs> um, shameless merch plug. Still got Kiwi Farmer singlets hats in stock. Sizes from medium for the singlets through to 2XL. Hats uh, grey, black, and blue. Check them out. They're getting into summer. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it. So, right, we're over here. Here's our. We've done three, well, in the process of doing three rows at the moment. One here, one up there, one up there. I think there'll be about five, five or six rows all up when we do this whole face. So we've uh, got this hole already done that I will show you in the next one. So this is the tool that we got given from Ecan just to help plant these poles. So it's got a spike on the end, about 65 mil pipe. Got a handle there, and then that ends for ramming the hole, and then that this here uh, is for ramming the post in, so uh, the pole in. So we'll show you how it works, show you the process. So identify your site. Um, if you're in a real wet patch, like in the in the very bottom of a gully, you just want to be slightly off to the side, so the tree can root into the bank. Um, here, it's pretty level, pretty easy slope, so we're just going to put it on the about 14 meters away from the last one so we just work a hole in Right down to the handle. It's pretty wet down there. That's good. So get our pole. Here's your 700 mil mark. There. Pole and hole. Give it a bit of a push down. Get our tool. Up and over there. Oh, get it on. What she said. Right. A few whacks, make sure you try and keep it straight. So wanna give it a few whacks until it stops going in pretty much. So here's our mark there. You can't see it from your side but it's right there on ground level. I'll lift that up. Flick this around. Use this end to fill in a hole. You want that good soil to stem contact. down as well you can kind of straighten it up if you need to then because this is not in a real boggy wet area we want to cultivate the soil on the top side so any rainfall that occurs will flow down into a trench a little slot and it will uh, 
encapsulate the pole. Now the way snowy. So we want to bash that in there. And just lever it up on the top side. Just to aerate it a wee bit. And we'll just stamp around the pole. Make sure that soil contact's good. I'll show you the finished product. So that's us there. We've got our cultivation, a couple of digs in here, so that's nice and loose. We've got our marker there, so it's in the ground 700. Our sleeves there, it's nice and straight. And uh, pretty firm, not too bad. It's not wobbling down the bottom, so off to the next one. So just while I remember, that scar fern is not just uh, poplar pole planting or willow planting. You can get some uh, funding for fencing off areas of region native or other fencing. Um, yeah, it's not, yeah, like I said, it's not just pole planting. So go and have a look if that's of interest to you guys. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Well, pretty, pretty good opportunity, especially for the WiMAC. This is the first year that it's, like I said, this is the first year that it's uh, been available here. So. Uh, that'll do for a Sunday. We're, um, I think we've done, what have we done? We've done 20. So we've done 40 all up last couple of days. So just doing a bit each day. And uh, in no time we'll have our 100 done. So it's a bit of a workout, but it's uh, quite rewarding. I'll flick you around, show you where I just was. So um, we just were, yeah, on that face over there. Probably can't see because of the sun. I just wanted to come over here and put a couple by the pond just on the top side of the pond here, Stockwater Pond, um, just because the main shelter in this paddock was a big pine tree over there that blew down last year. So it, uh, yeah, a bit more shelter, a bit more shade, can never go wrong. So thanks very much for watching. Um, yeah, check out all the links below. And uh, oh, one thing is, uh, yeah, I'll link below, there's some pretty good videos as well about, um, about the, the whole poplar pole planting and then selecting poplar and willow poles as well so there's some um, uh, yeah new zealand have done done quite a bit of research and they quite a lot of work on it this is not a new concept so another day another few poles planted i think i've got 15 to go out of 100 so i'll throw the drone up and fly around where i've done remember i've still got a few more to finish off just like i could probably do with two more just here between here and the pond um yeah going pretty good actually so about time to hand the tool thing off to Chris Barber so he can do his ones just down the road. Um, one thing I never mentioned is they recommend that these, you keep cattle away from these poles for 12 months just to let them root properly and um, so they don't start rubbing and tip them all over. And then in the summertime I'll go around with the hand rammer, just the old fencing rammer here, this one. And um, uh, just give them a bit of a tap in again. Make sure that any have come loose as the soil's dried out, have good contact, and give them the best chance of survival. So, so these are the poles we've just planted this afternoon. Like I said, need a couple more between there and the pond. This is the face we've planted most of the poles on, and this is the one that we can lodge in the ETS if we require or need to. And then this is the line I'm currently working on, uh, just trying to plant along the top of that erosion gully creek and then plant on the other side as well just trying to incorporate the older um, trees that we've already got along the gully as well and do our minimum of spacings 14 meters with that and then since i had the drone up i thought i'd chuck it around show you the awesome view that we've got here so that's looking back over oxford there now and then swing you around in the very far distance you've got banks peninsula port hills and Christchurch just underneath Stunning. 
So as I said in the last video, we're going to review a dog. Just talk about one of my dogs each video. So this video, I might do two. So we've got Fuff here. So Fuff is about 10. And Fuff and Jack. Jack, Jack, come here. Fuff and Jack, the black one here. His name's Jack because of the actor, Jack Black. Daddy's black, yeah. Um, they're, they're half brothers, so they got the same mother. Uh, Wink was their mother, so good friend of mine, Dwayne, who's up in uh, Paitua now. He, um, he had a he had a bitch, pretty awesome hunterway bitch. He was um, black like Jack is, and um, yeah, so I got those pups out of him. And then I've had had another one out of out of her as well. But pretty cool dogs, awesome natured, but yeah, pretty awesome dogs really. So Fuff is um, ten and Jack is nine, so starting to slow down. That's why Fuff's got his jacket on, and then Jack's just starting to get a wee bit of arthritis as well. So um, yeah, they are they are starting to slow down a bit. That's why we got Jasper, the big critter. Um, but I'll show you, I didn't mention the commands with Tex in the last video. So his commands were red is right, left is blue. You can make up any commands you want really when you're training a dog, but I, before I moved to the west coast I was playing rugby for Darfield and their colours are red and blue, so we just use red and blue. Um, Dwayne actually had a heading dog and one of his commands was rabbit and here. A rabbit was <laughs> right and here was left. Um, but yeah, so Fuff's commands were, this is his whistle bark. But they won't, see Jasper's getting all excited now, but they won't um, bark because there's no stock around here. Um, and then was right for him and his left. <laughs> the dogs think I'm sending them off somewhere. And then you've got your uh, get him behind and wall ago and um, get up, go back, things like that. So, yeah, um, pretty awesome dogs, pretty awesome hunterways. Yeah, really good natured. Hey, Jack, come here. Hey, Jack. You got a bit of a sore leg at the moment, too, don't you? Yeah, cuz. Awesome natured. Um, yeah, just nice and friendly and pretty cool to be around. So, so Fuff's name is actually comes from when Millie was a wee girl, um, only two, I think, when we got him as a pup. He, um, two, one, something like that. She couldn't say woof, so she said Fuff, and we hadn't had a name for him, so that's where his name came from. Hey. You love the old dog, don't you? And then Jack's commands are the same. There's Fuff's. Tucker time, Fuff. Dogs love tucker time. You know what that's quite off. <laughs> Classic New Zealand cartoon. And then next in line is Cuz. So next, next video will be Cuz. That'll do it for this video. Hope you learned something. Um, with the uh, pop poles and if you yeah if you want any more information check down below i'll link a uh, whole bunch there so thanks very much we'll check you in the next video bye no because he always wants pets don't you